What's up everyone? Dr. Allison here over at Natural Wellness Physiotherapy. And this video is for all my outdoor endurance athletes, whether you're a runner, a cyclist, any of those things. We're gonna be talking about heat training and hydration. And so if you're like me, you dread running in the heat, especially in Kansas. Um, it's that time of year where it's starting to heat up and I hate running in the heat because it feels hard. And here's some of those reasons why it feels hard. At a baseline, our resting heart rate is higher in the heat. And so then when we start to exercise, it doesn't take very long for that heart rate to creep up. And we feel like we're working really hard in the heat. Also, our general muscle function decreased or is at a lower level in the heat. And so we run out of energy quicker. Our muscles get way fatigued quicker. Also, our rate of perceived exertion. And so how hard an exercise or training session feels increases in the heat. And so the same five mile run in cool temperatures is going to feel way harder when you're training in the heat. Now, all of that sounds bad. So why would we bother training in the heat? And the reason is this physiological stress over time makes a lot of positive changes in our bodies. Our bodies are amazing at adapting and making, creating like more efficient systems. And so after we train in the heat for a while, we'll actually see a general increase in fitness levels, more so than if we were training in cool, temper cool temperatures. Um, we have increased perspiration. And so how quickly you sweat and how much you sweat increases. And this is important because you see over here, 80 to 85% of heat dissipation comes from sweating. And so if we sweat more and quicker, we're able to keep our body and our core temperature at a lower level as we train. Increased mitochondrial synthesis. If you remember from high school biology, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of this cell. And so this guy creates ATP, which is our energy that all of our cells in our body use to function. And so increase this means increased energy and more efficient cells and muscles, those kinds of things. Lastly, creates increased blood plasma volume. And so if we have more blood volume, our heart doesn't have to pump as much or as hard to get the same nutrients throughout our body. And so our blood carries all those nutrients and oxygen, things we need. And so if we have more blood volume, our heart doesn't have to work as hard to get that blood everywhere throughout our body. And so what that means is I recommend in these summer months, you training in the heat and allowing these adaptations to occur because you'll go into your fall races just crushing it. When we go into the fall and we've been training in the heat all summer, those things feel a lot easier in the fall. We have all of these benefits from training in the heat. And a lot of times we're able to hit PRs and those kinds of things from all of this. Now, one thing to keep in mind, when you're training in the heat, hydration becomes even more important. And so at general, if you remember, a lot of this comes from sweating. We lose about a liter of water per hour of exercise through sweat and through our breath, through breathing. And so proper hydration is super important, especially in the heat. It can be even higher than a liter of water per hour if we're training in the heat. And so make sure you're drinking your water, make sure um, you're supplementing, getting all the electrolytes and nutrients you need, like sodium, potassium, magnesium. Um, there's a bunch of different things like Element and Salt Stick, a bunch of different brands that have pretty good electrolytes. If you have any questions on hydration or electrolyte supplementation or just heat training in general, uh, leave a comment below. We'll be happy to get back to you. But until next time, happy training.